On this very day, October 24th in 1906, 118 years ago, the cathedral itself was jam-packed with people, and it is reported that thousands and thousands stood outside all around the cathedral in the streets of Oakland at the time to witness the dedication and consecration of this church, which had begun to be built in 1903. Amazing that three years, so many people labored so diligently and were able to construct what is for us our parish church and the mother church of the diocese dedicated to our patron, St. Paul. You may see the, the candles along the walls of the church lit today. It's the only day we can do that, the 12 spots where they consecrated the building with salt, with holy water, with oil, before they were covered up and remain as they are today. A sign that this church is meant to be the light to all the world, just as Jesus reminded us in the scriptures, to let your light shine so that all might come to know and believe in the Lord himself. From the very beginning, there have been sacred holy places where God's people gathered to worship the burning bush, the altars in the Old Testament, the temple that we hear about in the gospel today, the Ark of the Covenant that was carried around by the Israelites with the Ten Commandments, signs that God, God is truly present in our midst. He isn't aloof. He isn't up in heaven, not mindful of all that he has created. Those beautiful words from King Solomon in our first reading speak to that reality. Can it indeed be, Solomon says, that God dwells here on earth. If the heavens and the highest heavens cannot contain you, how much less this temple which I have built. And you know, every day we have people coming in, taking pictures, looking at the beautiful stained glass windows, the architecture, the statues. It's a magnificent work of art, but we know differently. This is a house of prayer. This is a holy and sacred place, not a museum, not a beautiful building. It's where God is truly present to us in the most dramatic and powerful way through the sacraments. And on this day in particular, we can only imagine and be ever so grateful for the number of masses that have been celebrated over 118 years for the salvation of the human race, for our salvation, the confessions heard, marriages that took place, young children being confirmed, the number of priests that were ordained here. But most especially, what happens at this altar every day is the reason for this cathedral, we are invited at every Mass to come with grateful hearts where we worship and honor God. That's why this was built, to give glory and honor to the power and the majesty and the greatness of our God. And he, through his love, has sent Jesus, his Son, to restore us, to redeem us. And he is made present at every Eucharist, the greatest miracle that could ever take place anywhere in the world happens every day. Here on this altar where we are invited to experience the healing, living, real presence of our God. But you know, St. Ambrose said already back in the third century, every time the faithful gather to remember the dedication of a church, we're really reminded of what St. Paul writes in our second reading today. You are the temple of God. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. Do you not know that the Spirit of God dwells within you? 
And it is that spirit that has already made us holy, not perfectly. But we are on the path to becoming perfect and holy as God is perfect and holy. That's why the church is here for no other reason to lead us to the very heart of God where we will become like him through grace. Jesus is angry at the money changers in the gospel today because they were extorting the poor. Anyone who came to the temple had to have things to offer for sacrifice, pigeons, turtle doves, oxen and sheep. And they could purchase them in the temple but they were taking advantage, those money changers, of the poor, the people that had no choice. They had to buy something or they couldn't enter the temple. What Jesus points out is that if we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, our lives need to reflect the love, the charity that is God himself. There's no better description for God. St. John writes, then God is love. And we too must acquire that heart of charity. That's the reason for all of this. It's nice to celebrate this great feast today. It's wonderful that we have the opportunity as members of the cathedral parish to come here time and time again. But we come for one reason, to be nourished and strengthened by the very presence of God so that we can go out into the world and share the light of God's love, to bring that presence of God that we have come to know to others. That's our task. That's our job, no one else's. People think they can come to church, say their prayers, and keep their faith locked up and go out into the world and not give it a mention. We're not Christian if we do that. We're here to be sent out what do we do every day to share the good news of Jesus with others? Do we talk about our faith, our love for the church with everyone that we meet along the way, our family, the students in our dormitories, where we work in our neighborhood? It's our task to bring that light out into the world so that others might come to know Jesus to experience the healing love of God and to become part of the church. Let's pray on this anniversary that we will give thanks to God for such a beautiful gift, most especially the gift of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, the gift of our faith. But on this day, may we pray for the strength, the courage, the passion to be able to go forth from this church renewed and strengthened for the mission of helping to bring the kingdom of God more and more into view by our words, yes, but most especially by our deeds, the way in which we choose to live that reflects all that is good about our faith in Jesus Christ. May God help us to do that every day through his grace.